the uh, again, you won't see the, these things listed in your in your uh, on the keys based on these tunics. But the sclera, which is the white outer white part of the eye, makes up most of the covering of the eye, is here and against the white of the eyes. The pointy is is normally here. It's missing on this model. It is on the other model that's identical to this. Okay, together they protect the eye. The pointy also is used for refraction of light along with the lens. Okay. The next thing we have to take a look at is we come back here. You can see the uh, optic nerve leaving the eye back there. Uh, when we open this up, okay. the cornea is missing here, but the sclera is all right. The conjunctiva, okay, I'm going to take a look at a conjunctiva. I'm going to jump from one model to the other. This is also the cornea. This, I'm sorry, this is also the sclera. With the cornea, the cornea, as you can see, is clear. Okay, and this model does have a, uh, uh, the, uh, sorry, the lacking of land. Uh, the, the conjunctiva is missing. You can't really see it on any of these models. The conjunctiva usually is a membrane that is going to lie in the inner layer of the eyelid and the anterior part of the eyeball up to, but not including the cornea. Okay, that's missing. I don't see it on any, any models, but something you probably have to know more collection. Okay. The, uh, if we open up, we can take a look at the vascular layer. Well, actually, this one here, you see the vascular layer from the outside, which is the next layer. It contains most of the blood vessels that, you know, are used to nourish and bring oxygen to the other layers. Okay. And then the uh, part of the vascular layer is called the choroid. And let me see. I can see, you can see it from the outside. Again, a lot of blood vessels here. And Okay, inside here, this is actually, you can't see the, uh, the vascular layer except right here. This part here is the retina, okay? The uh, vascular layer is probably represented on the inside here by that little red line. And you can see as we get up toward this side here, we have the ciliary body. This whole thing is the ciliary body, okay? The ciliary body has... Well, we have the ciliary body, which consists mostly of the ciliary muscles, okay? And then there's also the uh, ciliary process, which produces the fluid called the uh, aqueous humor, but you really can't see it very well in this model, okay? The, uh, the retina, oh, well, let's see, let's see, iris and pupil, okay. This part here is the, well, let's just go over and open this model here. Again, you'll see the vitreous humor here. You don't really see much of anything. This is the optic nerve on this model. The inside part for this model are not, is not very good. So, you know, I'm not, I'd probably, well, I would use this right here as the ciliary body. Okay. Now, the, uh, the oris serrata, we'll go down to, oh, the iris and people. This is the iris. Well, actually, the iris and the cornea on this model are pink, or uh, glued together, okay? Over here, this is the iris here. The iris is uh, the colored part of the eye. When people sit there and say they have blue eyes, they have brown eyes, they have hazel eyes, that's the pigmented part of the eye that's different in, in different people, okay? In the middle of that, you're going to find an opening. The opening in the middle of the iris over here and over on this model here is called a pupil. And depending on how the, uh, what layers of smooth muscle are contracted in the iris, that pupil can get large or small. It gets large when we have low light, it gets small when we have high light. Okay? It can also get as large or small depending on different types of drugs that people are taking. When people take stimulants, it tends to get larger. When they take uh, the depressants, they tend to get smaller. Okay? Now, the next layer, the sensory layer, can really see nicely in this model here. This model, not so much, okay? I wouldn't use that for the sensory layer, but on this one here, the sensory layer is in orange, and that consists of the orange part is the retina, okay? Uh, now, the aura serrata is that little edge between the ciliary body and the retina. It's serrata, meaning serrated, has a sort of serrated appearance or scalp appearance to it, so that's where it gets its name, okay? The uh, 
central phobia, okay, the central phobia is going to be over here, okay. If you take a look at it, if you see the eye, it's almost directly in back of the uh, of the opening of the eye, okay. It's, it's if you would take a, a a needle and go through the uh, through the pupil and go directly toward the uh, the posture of the eye that's lined up with the, the pupil, it would hit the, uh, well, there's a couple different names can use here. For example, this, in your book here, in your thing here, they talk about the central phobia. The central phobia is, in some books, called the phobia centralis, which is like a Latinized version of it. Okay, and it is actually a pit in the middle of the, uh, the, uh, the macula. The macula is the, uh, the area of the eye that has the greatest visual acuity, and it's the part of the eye that degenerates during macular degeneration. Okay. The, uh, let's see, the central phobia, optic disc. Okay. If I remove this, I don't know which half of this model has the number on it, but here you see the optic nerve. The optic nerve is leaving the eye. And at that point, you have, and you can see them on both sides, I don't see a number here for it, but that is the optic disc. And at the optic disc, you have these fibers, these axons, that come together to make up the optic nerve exiting the eye. And at the optic disc, you're going to find, and you can see in parentheses in your book, it says blind spot. Because as these fibers leave, they're, they're coming like this and they're going in, there's no place for any photoreceptors, so there's no, no, uh, there's no way of exciting that area. So you have an area that's blind spot. Okay. Uh, now, again, the vitreous receiver, clear, clear ball, or actually, again, in, in living things, it's actually not a sphere of plastic, but a, a, a fairly, you know, uh, decent condensed uh, gelatinous mass. Again, that really helps to. Uh, keep the shape of the eye, okay? Uh, and the lacrimal gland, I already showed that over here. We don't have means of lacrimal duct on any of these models. Some people do have models that show that, but we don't have one of those. Again, that produces tears. Okay? Is there any other um, time to come into all the lab test findings? Yes, well, today. Well, 